Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss critical behavior of gases, particularly in the ideal gas. The gaseous state of matter is an important area of study because gases are the most easily described state of matter mathematically. Also, gases can be converted into liquids by increasing the pressure, lowering the temperature, or both. And the interconversion of substances between the gas phase and the liquid phase is a key point in refrigeration and air conditioning. A mathematical description of gases that involves the pressure, the molar volume, and the temperature is called an equation of state. One of the most important equations of state that we have, you have the pressure times V sub M, which is the molar volume, is equal to the gas constant R times the thermodynamic temperature T. And this is the so-called ideal gas law. In Atkins' physical chemistry textbook, he calls it a perfect gas. And the two descriptors are equivalent. If we divide each side of the equation by the molar volume, we get an expression where we have the pressure on one side of the equation. This is often very useful to do this. So we have the pressure is equal to RT divided by the molar volume V sub M. If we plot the pressure of the gas as a function of the molar volume, we get a curve that looks like this. And we recognize that this relationship between pressure and the molar volume is exactly what it used to be called Boyle's Law. We also notice that there are no relative minima in this, in this curve, so there's no point where it turns flat. And so it seems that there is no point where the first derivative and or the second derivative of the pressure with respect to the molar volume is equal to zero. And we'll see that has a relevance when we compare the ideal gas to a real gas. In constructing such a curve of the pressure versus the molar volume, we do this at a particular temperature. And because of that, this type of curve is called an isotherm, since iso is a Greek prefix meaning the same, and therm is from temperature, as in uh, the word thermometer. So the blue line is the isotherm for the ideal gas. If we uh, measure and then plot the isotherms for a real gas, we get a different type of curve. It looks much like the ideal gas, but at some particular temperature, the curve will actually flatten out and then go back up. So at this particular point, so this is for a real gas, So we have a particular point here where we're going to see that the first derivative of the pressure with respect to the molar volume is equal to zero, and the second derivative of the pressure with respect to the molar volume is equal to zero. And we know those types of points are known as critical points or inflection points of the curve. And this particular point where this occurs will occur at a particular temperature which we call the critical temperature. The critical temperature has a physical significance. It is the highest possible temperature at which it is still possible to turn the gas into a liquid by applying sufficient pressure. Above the critical point, you can never turn a gas into a liquid uh, by adding pressure, no matter how much pressure you have.
So this particular point, the critical point, uh, there'll be the point at which the temperature occurs is the critical temperature. The pressure is the critical pressure, and the molar volume would be the critical volume. So the ideal gas does not show this type of behavior, whereas the real gas does. So this is one clear example where the ideal gas law differs from reality. We can also verify algebraically that an ideal gas does not exhibit this so-called critical behavior. So to exhibit critical behavior, we have the following situation, that we have the derivative of the pressure with respect to the molar volume is equal to zero, and the second derivative with respect to pre of pressure with respect to the molar volume is also equal to zero. So this will be true at the critical point. So at the critical point, these two derivatives will each be equal to zero. It is sometimes more convenient to write the equation of state that we're interested in in an exponential form. So we're going to write this as RT times the molar volume to the minus one. And the reason why that can be convenient is that it makes it easier to apply the laws of differentiation to our expression. So let's see what the first derivative of the pressure with respect to the volume is going to be of our pressure here. So R and T are each constants, so they are unchanged. The exponent is a minus one for the molar volume, so we have a minus one in front. And then recall that we reduce the value of the exponent by one, so that gives us Vm to the minus two power. And this is more conventionally written as minus RT divided by the molar volume squared. So this is our first derivative of the pressure with respect to the volume. To find the second derivative of the pressure with respect to the volume, we use the, fast, use the fact that the second derivative is the first derivative of the first derivative. So we can take our expression for the first derivative and differentiate it again to get the second derivative. So we see that we have a minus two exponent and a minus one in front. We multiply this in front, so that gives us a plus two. R and T are constants, so they continue. And now we decrease the exponent of the molar volume by one again, so that gives us Vm to the minus three, which we can write more traditionally as two RT divided by the molar volume cubed. Now recall, at the critical point, the first derivative is equal to zero, the second derivative is equal to zero. So if each of them are equal to zero, they must be equal to each other. So we have at the critical point. So that tells us that minus RT divided by the molar volume squared is equal to 2RT divided by the molar volume cubed. And if we were mathematicians, we would write down that Vm not equal to zero, but you know in a physical sense that the molar volume can never be zero. You can multiply each side of the equation by the molar volume squared, and that gives us that minus RT is equal to 2RT divided by the molar volume. Next, we can divide each side by RT, and that gives us that minus 1 
is equal to 2 divided by the molar volume. And then it gives us that the molar volume must be equal to minus 2. This is clearly unphysical. Um, so this is a contradiction. And it tells us, therefore, that there is no value of the molar volume such that we can have critical behavior. So we can see mathematically that by setting the first derivative and the second derivative equal to zero and to each other, we see that there is no critical behavior for an ideal gas, which is exactly the same conclusion we reached by inspection of the ideal gas isotherms and in comparison of those isotherms to the isotherms for a real gas. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.